Let us pray. In the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, may the meditations of my heart and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. When wrestling with this text today from the Gospel of John, I thought of this quote from a distinguished Presbyterian minister and alumni of Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, the Reverend Fred McFeely Rogers, when he said, quote, We have all different gifts, so we all have different ways of saying to the world who we are. Why do I add this into the discussion today? Because I believe God is calling us to wrestle with the idea of sharing our resources, sharing our ideas, and taking on the burdens of our neighbors. Whether we have a church endowment of $300 million or a church that doesn't even have an endowment at all, congregations are called to help in whatever way they can. Whether we have a couple hundred million dollars in our bank account or we are struggling to get by with any money in our bank accounts, we are called to help out in the ministry of the Lord in the multitude of ways we can. The labor of our hands and feet are sufficient enough, and our talents are to be employed in whatever ways we can, because, my dear siblings in Christ, sharing is indeed caring. In my contextual analysis class at seminary, a class that helps us study the needs of communities inside and outside of the church space, we wrestled with this idea. Not every community has the resources to provide everything for its citizenry. Not every church has to do the same mission. Not every member has to be a part of the same mission group. Firstly, we must identify the needs that there are in the community. I play this game called GeoGuessr where you have to guess where you are in the earth based off of Google Street View imagery. You have to look for road signs, look for town names, national and regional flags, and so much more. Like Jesus recognized that the people were coming to be fed for him, fed by him, we too must identify the context clues. It takes some deep soul searching. And with that soul searching, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we will be able to perceive the needs based off of our careful, attentive observations. We, as a community of people, based on where we settle, where we worship, and as individuals, do not have to do the same thing. In today's text, Jesus did not give the same tasks to Saints Andrew and Philip. If we look at back at the text on verse 5, Jesus gave the task to St. Philip, to scrounge together the resources, to gather the bread and fish for the 5,000. And likewise, Jesus instructed St. Andrew to gather the people together to receive the loaves of barley bread and fish on verse 10. Some of you in this community are called to take on leadership role in this community, be it running for city council or for standing for election, for session. Another group in this congregation are called to be the workers in the trenches at the church picnic. Your congregation seems to fulfill the need to provide consignment items through your thrift store. Your ministry helps many people. And off of the reviews on Google, someone wrote that you share incredible fruits here because of this ministry. This is how you perceive God is calling you to share of your resources. Lean into that ministry. Promote it. Keep showing the community how God is working in this place to share your resources with others. In my church history class and in my involvement with the governance of the Presbyterian Church, there is a struggle of how Presbyterians engage with the world. Some people would like our involvement to be decently and orderly, and some people feel to call our to feel called to express our ministry in an arduous fashion, very loving fashion. Our denomination has, for many years, seemed to always take the decently and orderly path. From today's scripture, it seems the manner in which God is calling Jesus, Andrew, and Philip to serve is right between the order and ardor part lines. Jesus calls St. Saint Andrew, Andrew and Philip to do certain tasks, and he organizes them to do different tasks. 
But he does not discourage them from sharing with each other, as we previously discussed. In my involvement with Presbyterian church governance, we've often had some diffi very difficult topics that we wrestle with. There are some people who want to take the bull by the horns and take a stance on a controversial issue, like our stances on fossil fuels, or our certain stances on certain wars that have been waged or are currently being waged. We have often gone to choose the order side too much and not engaged with the world around us. This scripture commands us to be organized, be orderly, but to fulfill a need right when it is right in front of our faces, like the masses of 5,000 looking for nourishment, right in front of Jesus and Saints Andrew and Philip. What do we share? Do we choose to use our pulpits to share love, or do we choose to harbor hatred? I would suggest the latter over the former. In verses 12 through 13, Jesus, speaking to Saints Andrew and Philip, commands them to gather up the leftover fish and bread and to continue to share them, filling up 12 baskets. One could argue that this portion of Scripture is calling us not to harbor our leftovers, but to continue them, to share them with others. I would suggest that in our modern context, this would be similar to this question. Have left of un leftover unused, unopened food at a church picnic? Give it to the local food pantry. Have an extra $10,000 in your church budget? Why not sponsor a Habitat for Humanity house project nearby? In 1942, Anne Frank said, Always give something, even if it is only kindness. That is what Jesus, Andrew, and Philip were doing trying to share what they had. And if you have, all that you have to share is your kindness, do it. It will be hard, but it will be so worth it to do so. In the annotations from the HarperCollins NRSV Study Bible, it tells us that barley bread was commoner's bread, the bread of the people, what they could give. That is what God is calling us to do. Share what we have even if it is not the largest contribution of our time or money or our greatest and kindest act. It is all about the simplicity of our actions. We must be very careful when we share our resources with others. Like Jesus did so bravely at the 18th verse, we too must not accept a crown for what we do. Our sharing of resources must not lead us to be in a posture of domination not intentionally creating an atmosphere where we must dominate. Instead, we must be relational. Like Jesus was with the sharing of bread and fish, it was a relational act, not an act of dominance. And according to the Reverend James Lawrence, a Lutheran minister on his Pastoral Ponderings blog, he writes, he, Jesus, also sees an opportunity to teach to his 12 apostles an economic lesson too. The simple but radical lesson that with Jesus, there is always enough. There is always enough. That is our calling to show that the church here in Johnstown and across the whole wide world, we are, are a blessed gathering that is able to provide enough for all people. The quotation from the Presbyterian Church USA communion invitation rings true with this notion that this is not our table or our church. It is the Lord's table and the Lord's church. Regardless of age, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, marital status, political views, God's grace must be extended to all in our sharing. Jesus, as the living example of God in our world, calls us to have grace in sharing with our fellow human beings. That, my dear siblings in Christ, is what we must offer, not taking up a crown and dominating others in our sharing, but instead being relational in our sharing. In a world that is pitted against itself, we must resist the temptation 
to go in bitter ways. We must not close our hearts to the people of God. We must be firm in our calling for peace and not stoking division. We must stand for a world that is more faithful to Christ's call to extend a hand to friend and stranger. The blessing of St. Patrick reminds us of that incarnational presence of Christ in friend or stranger. We must understand that the people we are sharing with have the love of God put into their hearts regardless of how they look or act. It is our duty as Christians to share with all people, making our worshiping spaces an example of that radical hospitality, using our church assets for things greater than the divine worship services like we are doing today. Instead, using our resources to do the divine worship of serving others, sharing of what we have, even if it is just humble barley bread and some fish. Lastly, as I mentioned in the beginning of the worship service, it is the feast day of Ludwig von Beethoven. His life was dedicated to sharing beautiful music with the world, like the hymn we sang today, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, the, the, the music at least. His many musical works are renowned in many different spaces. He said something that should ring true with how we share our talents and gifts. He noted that, quote, to play a wrong note is insignificant, but to play without passion is inexcusable. When we share our resources, we will not always perceive the things that we need to share. We will often have moments where we fall down. But as Beethoven reminds us, we must do so with a fire of passion in our hearts. We may feel like it is not going so well, but if we put our whole bodies into it, we are at least showing that we, are, we as Presbyterians are not the frozen chosen. Rather, we are a beautiful community of believers who is doing something new in our world. We must have the passionate fire of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, minds, and souls as we share of our resources. I charge us all, as we go forward, joyfully sh sharing of our resources, balancing the order and order of how we share those resources, and in the diverse manners in which we share our resources, to shout the loud refrain of the third verse of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which calls us to shout, In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me, as he died to make all holy, let us live to make all free. While God is marching on, shouting glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. Let us transfigure the wor world through the through sharing of our resources. With a glory in our bosom that transfigures all who we encounter. Let us share our resources to make all free of fear of want and fear of losing what they have. As we go forth, may divine providence be our guide, and may God bless us all and hold us in those almighty hands of grace. And the people of God said, Amen.